celebrate the life of Tom. One who left us abruptly, and one who has gone back to his creator and the maker. We are here to commend him to God. We are here to pray for his soul, that he may enjoy eternal bliss with God. This man is going to pray for his family, Juliet and all the children and all the relatives, for God's strength and courage in this time of loss and grief. That despite the pain, they may still be assured of vision. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God.
Samuel chapter 12, verse 15 to 23. Then Nathan returned to his house. The Lord struck the child that the wife of Uriah had borne to David, and it became desperately ill. David besought God for the child. He kept a fast. He kept a fast. Retiring for the night to lie on the ground clothed in sackcloth on the ground. The elders of his house stood beside him, urging him to rise from the ground. But he would not, nor would he take food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. David's servants, however, were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, when the child was alive, he spoke to him. He told him that the child was dead. For they said, when the child was alive, we spoke to him. But he will not listen to what we say. However, he, he, however, however, were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, when the child was alive, we spoke to him. But he will not listen to what we say. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. But David noticed his servant whispering among themselves and realized that the child was dead. He asked his servants, is the child dead? They replied, yes. Rising from the ground, David washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. Then he went to the house of the Lord and whispered. He returned to his own house, where at he, his request was set before him and he ate. His servant says to him, What is this you are doing? When the child was, was leaving, you fasted and wept and kept peace. Now that the child is dead, you arise and take food. He replied, While the child was living, I fasted and wept, thinking, Perhaps the Lord will grant me this child's life. But now, Verses 1 to 2, 4 to 5, 10 to 11. Response. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. We all respond. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth.
save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him, saying in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed we have been condemned justly for the sentence we have received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The gospel of the Lord. Sisters, dear friends, we are gathered here today with the remains of Tom to pray, pray for him and present him to the Lord. A message of death is always a hard message to accept in our lives. It's always a hard message to pass across to people, relatives and friends. The first reading tells us of how it was difficult for the workers to tell David that his son is dead. And they asked themselves, what will he do if we tell him the child has died? But David looked at their reactions and concluded the child is dead. Passing such kind of information is always difficult. And we coming here this morning together with Juliet and the other family members and relatives, it is indeed very difficult to pass on this message a message of reality that one who was with us and one who bid us farewell going to work and the one we have been staying with, talking to and laughing with is no more. He is gone. It's always a difficult message to pass across. But like David, we are strengthened knowing very well that Tom, wherever he is gone to, is a good place. We are here, number one, to pray for his soul. At the point of death, nothing matters to the dead person apart from prayer. In the first reading, when the child died, David rose from where he was and went to the house of the Lord to pray. But what David does before this is equally important. David rose up, David washed, David anointed himself, and David changed his clothes. No chumalo, no lokore, no winoremo, no loko leoni, bange no dionyasai modole. David came to the house of the Lord, yes, with pain for losing his child. But not in a mourning mood, as one 
but he came as one who was coming to give thanks to God. One who came to praise God for his will has been done. This should always also be our attitude to approach the Lord differently. For the Lord is the author of everything. At the point of death like this of ours, are we able to rise up? Are we able to wash? Are we able to anoint ourselves? Are we able to change our clothes and come to the Lord differently from the way we do it while at home? How do I approach the Lord? Do I approach the Lord with a lot of questions in my heart? Or do I approach the Lord with a lot of emotions and crying and weeping and wailing like one who is lost? David is telling us the attitude of changing our mentality and who we are when we approach the Lord even in that most painful moment of our lives. The change of clothes, the washing, going to the Lord clean, not with the clothes that he was with when the child was sick. You remember the reading was telling us he stayed seven days without taking shower, without bathing, without moving. He was just there by the bedside praying for the child. But now he's going to the Lord fresh. Because he knows the Lord is the author of everything. We have come before the Lord, yes, with pain. But the Lord desires that you come to him fresh. Fresh simply to praise him. Simply to give him thanks and simply to pray for the soul of our departed brother Tom. The first reading tells us a second thing. That at the point of death, acceptability also matters. Being able to accept that the one we were with is no longer a part of our lives. It gives us that process of healing. Being able to accept that death has taken away one of us. And David teaches us to be and remain positive despite the pain. He says, I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. And this is a statement of acceptance. Of respecting the will of God that this will has been carried out and what matters is now the child is with God Tom is with God and David is cognizant to a fact that he is the one who will join the child in heaven and that is the reality of life Tom can never come to us in the human form. But it is us who will go to where Tom has gone to, to reunite ourselves with him. The reality of death. And David accepted, though in pain, the death of his child. Our prayer also today, that yes, death has robbed us, a husband, a father, an uncle, a brother, a friend. But the acceptability that he is gone forever just to remain as a mark in our hearts as one we loved and one we moved with. And the acceptability that it is you still walking, still talking, that it is you who now awaits your time. That is the painful truth that Tom has finished his journey. Your journey still has some few days, some few hours, some few months, some few years. It is us who will join him. David is teaching us to learn to accept the pain of death, the sting of death. But St. Paul reminds us that death cannot defeat us anymore because Jesus Christ brought us that gift of salvation. 
When you say death, where is your sting? Because Christ is coming to unite us all. Number three, first reading also teaches us that at the point of death, life continues. You need to eat. You need to eat. When David returned from the temple, David sat in his own house and asked the workers, for food. And they set it before him. And he ate. And David said, When the child was leaving, because now the, the workers were like, Why is he doing this? When the child was sick, he could not even eat or do what? Why is he doing this? Then David tells them, When the child was leaving, I fasted and wept, thinking, Who knows? The Lord may grant me the child's life. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Now he is dead. Why should I fast? David tells us the importance of getting the strength. The strength to go on with our life. Not forgetting of the dead person. But it tells us life continues. Everyone has a journey to make. All of us, like those traveling in Amatatu, we alight at different stage. Not unless, not unless you left your family together to a certain point. But then even at that point, you will not get out of the Matatu together. One must step out first. David tells us, life has its own stage. And each and every one of us seated here, we have our different stages. A stage of Tom is today. Your stage is also coming. But David is sharing the meal. David is also teaching us that as a Christian community, we should share in the meal of the Eucharist. The meal of Jesus Christ himself. The meal that gives us the strength to go on. The meal that gives us the strength to accept the sting of death. The meal that gives us the strength, yes, to cry, but not to cry without hope. The meal to give us the strength to continue praying for our dead relative. We eat. Life continues, and that's why even tomorrow, even today and tomorrow, people will come to eat even before we bury Tom. They will come and the first place they visit will be place of catering. We must eat. If it ever becomes too much expensive because we must slaughter cows and goats and what, must look for fish and chicken and what, people come to eat. People come to feast. The first food, God tells us, that nourishes our body is the food of the Eucharist. Yes, we also need the food for the body, for our own strength to do and work. And so David tells us life continues. This we experience even today or tomorrow when you go home. People come to eat. In that pain, they will eat. The moment you go to the grave for burial, some at the catering place eating. The reality of life, life goes on. It doesn't stop at death. And number four, even though we cry, let us not lose our hope. David never cried. Actually, the Bible doesn't tell us that David cried when the child died. The Bible only tells us how he went to the temple, how he woke up, washed himself, anointed himself, changed his cloth, went to the temple, came, sat at the table and asked for food. He never cried. Not because David was not in pain. He was in pain. But David knew that the will of the Lord has been carried out. But most importantly, David was of the 
know how that Jesus Christ had cried for us all. When you read Matthew 27 verses 45 to 46, you hear how Jesus Christ cried for us all. My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? Who among us cannot fail with these words of Christ in this mass today? Who cannot join the words of Jesus Christ to our own feelings and emotions with the departure of Tom? When Jesus Christ on the cross, he summarized our cries in the presence of death. And this Jesus summarizes our tears at the death of Tom. The tears of his immediate family. The tears of his extended family, the tears of relatives, the tears of friends, the tears of a place of work. We join our tears together with that of Jesus hanging on the cross. And we say together, Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? But upon saying those words of Jesus, we realize the immense love. God never deserted Jesus. Even though Jesus cried, God never deserted Jesus. But God wanted to show us how he loved us in sacrificing his own son. In our cry, Lord, Lord, why have you deserted me? That should lead us the love of God. And because of the love of God, Tom has gone to share in the eternal joy. With God. May He listen to the pain of our hearts, the pain of our soul, the cries within, deep within us. Sometimes they don't come out. But deep inside, we ask, Why, Lord, Lord, why have you deserted me? Jesus cried for us all. And God uses that cry to show how He loved us. And with this cry of Jesus, the loud cry of Jesus, Jesus gives us the next important thing in our lives, forgiveness and eternal life. When Jesus say in today's gospel that we read, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. And with this mercy of God, we are assured of enjoying eternal life with him. May Tom experience the mercy of the Lord. Why does the Lord forgive? The Lord forgive because of what he tells this repentant thief. Today you will be with me in paradise. The Lord forgives us. He cries on the cross. He forgives us our sins in order to enjoy eternal life with him. So that today Tom Mboya Ogola may enjoy with God in paradise. We celebrate the life of Tom because he has heard these words of the Master. Today you will be with me in paradise. This is the climax of human life that we are able to enjoy eternal life with God in paradise. Why? Because God forgives us. Why do God forgives us? Because we are weak in our human nature. And we commit sin each and every other time. We rely so much on the mercy and forgiveness of God. For us to enjoy that eternal life with God in heaven. May Tom enjoy eternal life with God in heaven. And dear friends, death teaches us so many things. And a few things I share. Number one, death teaches us to live well with people. Dagma Ben Kodichi. Live well with people because whatever you are today will not be your permanent position. Tomorrow you need Paul bearers, people who console you, some to remind you, to remember you. But remember, no man can live as an island. 
live well with people. We are here today because we knew this man and because he lived well with us. How do you live with people? How do you relate with people? However much money you have, however much influential you are, there are things you can never do alone. At such stage, you need people. And if you not at such stage, there are some aspects of your life you will need people. Live well with people. Number two, that teaches us to know that you are not your own boss. God is in control. He is our boss. He is in control all the time. But sometimes we act like we are in control and we disregard God in all that we do. You are not your own boss. And that's why every other time we need to come to our boss, who is God, to acknowledge his presence in our lives, to worship him, to give him thanks, to praise him, to adore him, because he is our boss. Tom is not a boss of his own life. At the point of death, he is going back to the real boss, who is God, the creator of heaven and earth. Number three, in your busy schedule, remember your family. Work is work, and family is family. Don't be too busy to forget the needs of your family. The work is not here today to bury Tom, but family and friends are here. Never turn your back on such an important organ in the society. No matter what work you do, no matter your position, you are still human being. Never place too much attention on that call of yours to neglect your family and relatives. Tom was working, yes, but that work is not here to marry him. We are here to marry him. The family, the friends, the community. And that stems with the first point. Relate well, even with your family. Relate well with them. You never know what comes tomorrow. In the society, relate well with them. Life teaches us important lessons. Lastly, at death, teaches us that we need to leave a lesson behind. Not a bad lesson but something good that people can remember. Are you writing a story in the life of someone to remember you with when you are no more? Something that can inspire someone and something that can... Your life is a story. Ask yourself, is it a positive story or is it a negative story? May we always write positive stories in the life of the people we meet. Because that positive story will make us to travel from far and wide to go and bury our friend because of that positive story. If it is a negative story, we can't travel that far and wide. We'll say, may the Lord rest his soul in peace wherever you are. Always write a positive story. Your life is a story. Is it a positive one? Is it a negative one? May the angels of the Lord welcome Tom into eternal paradise. May Jesus Christ welcome him into his eternal home. And like he told this thief, Tom, may you today enjoy with God in paradise. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
let us in faith call upon God the Almighty Father, who raised Jesus, his Son, from the dead, as we pray for salvation of the living and the dead. We pray that God may establish the Christian people in faith and unity. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. We pray that God may be pleased to show himself a father to our brother and sisters who lack work, food, or housing. Lord, hear us. We pray that God may be pleased to admit forever in the company of the saints his deceased servant Tom, who once through baptism received the seed of eternal life. Lord, hear us. We pray that in the last day he may raise up Tom, who fed on the body of Christ the bread of eternal life. Lord, hear us. We pray for the gift of peace and consolation upon the family members of Tom in this moment of pain and grief. May the Lord always be there for them, cover them, and protect them. Lord, hear us. For our own personal prayers, we pray in silence. Lord, hear us. May the prayer of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants. O oh Lord, free them, we pray, from all their sins and make them share us in your redemption through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, my sacrifice and you ask be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Tom Boya Ugola, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
indeed, holy O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make all these gifts he brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Too, 
and to all our blessing to you at your passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good.
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ be saved for eternal life.
uh, Center Magoma, St. Clair, and Yaguru Martin, Mar Council, Mar Kansan. Adaka Upulu Mukungu Margo Neja Dolo, Marwa, Father Collins, Yukunj, Yokwaya Gijo Christus, uh, Hirukamano, Mesa, Mwatimu Neja Punj Tom, uh, and Mr. Mabeth, it's wonderful, especially the healing part of it. Nokaki Pujwani, Ligena process through prayers, again the family, Probea, the pain, and the most, most Hebrew heal. Uh, then, uh, Julie, the mama, I mean, Tom, Minena Duto, the Obama's family. Uh, Kaka Fado Sekwayo, uh, Newadwa Leo Martin, no Newa Chak, Sar, Uwen, but in some delays, no one will be too late. But Father Wakwayo, no one will be able to talk. One person from the family, uh, Dan, and then Yapunjo uh, Gada will give us the direction from Kaya. So, Sama Chaki, brother Dan, kindly come. And then uh, we'll call Yapunji uh, Ogada, who is also our. Chairman Mar Committee. To the rest, your Christus model, I think most of the speeches he brought in key, but Yakoma Neno Kai Yakoma Mar Parish Parane Noko, Tinja Koma Marsa Parish Mabin and Yakoma Mar Trustisa Yapunjo Kitugi Fakwe. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Yakom St. Paul is in a round, not a round. Uh, no one get on by the CMA. You come CMA. Thank you very much, JC. Thank you. Dan, thank you. In Urkamano, Father, the Doctor Nesaduto, Wade, the Matka, the Doctor Vero Kamano, or more, Umbiro Kudoa, the Gibe Kodaka Nisa, the Lia Tom Nimi. Marakaka. Kwa siku kukumaru. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you
Marja. Shipo kamano, tagono ero kamano, kum participate in Misa Marja. Mkonjitong, thank you so much. So to Juliet, we continue to give you a message of condolence and peace uh, for losing your husband. A man you loved and stayed with, we pray that God may give you the strength to be able to have that peace of heart, the peace of heart. I saw Tom some few weeks ago before his death when I went to pray for him in his house and I gave him the sacrament of Eucharist. And together with the Jumia members, <coughs> we were planning that we go to the house and celebrate Mass uh, for Juliet and so for Tom. We believe we'll still be able to do that even after his demise. Uh, Rita Moti and Juliet is uh, a trustee of uh, Bondo Choir and a trustee, a constitution say if you are a trustee, you are like a choir member. It's only that you are not singing. And so we can assure you, Juliet, that our choir will be there tonight. Uh, Sam from uh, Bondo Choir will be there. The youth choir will be there. And Goma Choir will be there. Manobu the Manati, Lonya Kuki, Yokama. King to Kori Kulich. King Kori Kulich. Oro Wakonjo Juliet, Manoko Tom. In a peaceful manner. And we give her the messages of hope and consolation. Again, again, and again. Liete magijo kuwa njiseche moko Uweche teke, tadu wageno Ni wanjupu njimu somo Wakini baesa uche nginu usu wache kwa everything Njupu njimisa wa huu Njupu njimisa wa huu I just want to pray and hope That tomorrow by 12.30 We should be done with all our speeches so that we begin Mass at 1 or 1.30. Are we together? Yes. Let us not be at war. But when I come, Father who, Father who, Father Ritmati, Yangwe Kone Lai, Yupuni Pokote Mamo, Aha. Yukumia Mika Nyagol Kita Moromo Kadua Gagoto. So, we start program early, so that it ends early. So I request St. Paul, where Julie comes from, Saint Joseph, Kamawadi Bediagi Iko Goma, to ensure there is a smooth running of the processes today and tomorrow, together with the catechist uh, Paul Odote. So that we give uh, Mr. Tom a good mass tomorrow, a peaceful one, and a good send off. We want to pray for every journey we are going to make to his house and to his home in preparation for the burials tomorrow. We pray that God may give us the grace of consolation, of love, and peace.
Paulo sua takatifu uyo kumbautizi kwa wajumi ya Kani obati so waluto ni wale ure ni krisu setone Tune oyi kwa kode bende Kono kaka ni krisu suchiru wako mjomoto Kukuteko madu maru woro E kaka wan bende wabene ingema kwenyeni Kawa seri ure kone thone Tuwana li ure kone chiyo ni bende Now and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to the Master's name.